move that could have major implications for social networking sites like Twitter and Facebook, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law Tuesday strengthening regulations on internet data storage. Starting in 2016, the new law will require internet operators to store Russian user data in centers within the country. Critics say once data is stored on Russian servers, it will be subjected to Russian laws, putting it at risk for censorship. Companies that don't comply will be blocked from the web. Agence France Press reported that the law is part of a plan to improve the management of personal data of Russian citizens on computer networks. Critics say it could have a chilling effect on a variety of websites, including Facebook and Twitter, which do not have Russian data centers. According to CNN, the Democratic Republic of Congo's Ministry of Health reported Thursday that 1,510 cases of Ebola have now been reported in North Kivu and Itori provinces. Friday afternoon, the Ministry of Health said there had been 1,008 Ebola deaths to date. Ebola causes fever, severe headache and sometimes hemorrhaging. It is said to kill about half of those infected on average. Just more than 400 patients have been treated and discharged from Ebola treatment centers during the outbreak, which began in August. The ministry said since January we've experienced 119 separate attacks, 42 of which have been directly on health facilities, with 85 health personnel either injured or killed in those settings. The outbreak is the second deadliest in history. In West Africa in 2014, the disease killed more than 11,000 people. Thailand's king has granted a public audience on the last day of his coronation. King Maha Wachiralongkorn and Queen Sutida waved to thousands of well-wishers from the balcony of the Grand Palace in Bangkok. The King also met with members of the International Diplomatic Corps this evening. The meeting wrapped up three days of intricate ceremonies, including a royal procession yesterday. The report puts it plainly. More than 40% of all amphibian species are threatened, along with almost 33% or a third of all reef-forming corals and more than a third of all marine mammals. It also details the five main drivers of species loss, changes in land and sea use, direct exploitation of organisms, climate change, pollution, and invasive alien species. New details on that deadly plane crash in Moscow that killed 41 people, including an American. Officials have recovered the black boxes. ABC's Dan Harris is in Moscow with new reporting. Good morning, Dan. Michael, good morning. According to a well-respected local newspaper here in Moscow, investigators are honing in on pilot error as a likely cause of this fiery and fatal crash. This morning, as we see new images of Russian investigators working inside the charred husk of the plane, as well as these images from inside the cabin with passengers screaming as they see the rising flames, investigators are now reportedly keying in on the pilot of that ill-fated Aeroflot jet. The first potential mistake, the flight carrying 78 passengers and crew took off from Sherry Medeva Airport en route to Murmansk and flew into storm clouds. It was in the air for 28 minutes, during which time it was reportedly hit by lightning. Lightning strikes are not unusual, but according to a local newspaper called Commerçant, investigators are looking at whether the pilot then made another error by hurrying to make an emergency landing instead of burning off the extra fuel. Tony 伊莎贝尔的主治医生海伦斯宾塞与美国格兰哈特福尔教授带领的实验室
，研发出一种实验性的噬菌体疗法。噬菌体是在大自然中普遍存在的病毒，会感染并杀死细菌，因其感染特定目标的特性。在研发的过程中，哈特福尔教授和他的团队必须针对千种噬菌体组合做不同的测试。最后的病毒鸡尾酒疗法由三种噬菌体组成，其中两种被研发团队透过基因工程改造，以增加攻击特定细菌的效用。伊莎贝尔接受噬菌体治疗六周后，感染便完全消失，也没有任何副作用。噬菌体疗法因其对抗具抗药性超级细菌的潜力。获全球关注。They're off again. The United States has delivered a new blow to the trade war with China by increasing tariffs on 200 billion dollars worth of Chinese goods. The hike kicked in just after midnight in the U.S. Now that's about noon in China. So it means duties on more than 5,700 Chinese goods have increased from 10% to now 25%, and the affected products range from Vegetables to telecommunication equipment. China has vowed to retaliate, with the Commerce Ministry saying that it will have to take necessary countermeasures. Beijing has yet to elaborate, with the Foreign Ministry spokesman telling the world to stay tuned for the details. And U.S. President Donald Trump now he's keeping it cool. Within the past hour, he tweeted that. He was in absolutely no rush to finalize a trade deal with China, and he also said that the U.S. will continue to negotiate with China in the hopes that they do not again try to redo the trade deal. While China markets held steady today, and it could be due to the so-called grace period. Now, this means that the 25% levy won't apply to U.S.-bound cargoes that left China before 12:01 a.m. on Friday. Instead, the goods are subjected to the original 10% duty and are only applied upon arrival in the U.S. So that gives an unofficial window about three weeks before the tariff actually takes effect. Hello. We begin with some breaking news. Two oil tankers have been attacked in the Gulf of Oman. Iranian media is reporting that distress calls have been made from the ships to port authorities in Oman and Pakistan. The Maritime Trade Operations Center in the UK said is it is aware of an incident but hasn't given any more details. It's put the ship's position midway between Oman and Iran. Now, this is a month after four tankers were attacked in the Gulf, not far. From the UAE port of Fujaira, two were Saudi tankers. The others、uh, from the UAE and Norway. Swedish authorities say they're reopening an investigation into a rape allegation against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Assange is currently in a Britain prison where he's serving time for jumping bail in 2012. The investigation stems from an accusation in August 2010 made by a Swedish woman who said Assange had sexually assaulted her. According to Sweden's deputy director of public prosecutions, the decision is not equivalent to making a decision to indict Assange, but a European arrest warrant will be issued. Taiwan made history today by becoming the first place in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. Parliament approved the move, which takes effect when President Tsai Ing-wen signs the bill into law. These are bad times for Chinese smartphone maker Huawei, because Google has stopped、uh, giving its Android services and support. For Huawei devices from now on, and this has happened not only because of the trade war going on between the United States and China, but also because of the fact that Chinese companies like Huawei and ZTE were seen breaching、uh, the United States privacy policies, and that could be the major reason that Google has taken this step. Loved and loathed with equal passion, the incumbent Prime Minister Narendra Modi has dominated this election. Leader of the Hindu nationalist BJP, this anti-establishment son of a tea seller attracts a cult-like status. Modi, Modi, Modi. Mr. Modi's supporters say it's his intention to enrich the nation, not himself. Unlike many of the politicians of the past, he can, they believe, deliver development, fulfilling India's fate as a regional superpower. India is the fastest-growing major economy in the world. 
Venezuela's jails are completely overcrowded. That means that prisoners across the country are stuck in police station lockups while they wait for space to be freed up. For many, family visits are their only hope of food. NGO investigators claim that several detainees have died of hunger. Because this country is a union, not just a family of four nations, but a union of people, all of us. Whatever our background, the color of our skin or who we love, we stand together and together we have a great future. Our politics may be under strain, but there is so much that is good about this country. So much to be proud of, so much to be optimistic about. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honor of my life to hold. The second female prime minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Say gang members from one prison block invaded another at the Altamira jail in the state of Para, which is located in central Brazil. 16 of the dead were decapitated. The other is suffocated after part of the prison was set on fire, preventing guards from accessing the prison for several hours. Two prison officers who were taken hostage have been freed. Officials think this further proves their theory that the goal of the attack was to target the rival gang rather than prison guards. President Trump arrived in Tokyo on Saturday for a historic trip. He will be the first world leader to meet Emperor Naruhito who was installed last month after his father abdicated the throne due to old age. I think we right now probably have the best relationship with Japan that we've ever had. The president started his visit at a dinner with several dozen Japanese and American business leaders. He said their two countries are working hard to craft a bilateral trade deal. Japan has had a substantial edge for many, many years, but that's okay. Maybe that's why you like us so much. The cricket. 48 games, one ball, here's Bolt, they're going to push, are we in for a super over, they've got to go quick, they've got to go quick, out, I'm sure he's out, we're going to a super over. Unbelievable, we are not done yet. This is the moment. It's Archer to Guptill. Two to win. Guptill's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's gone through. He's got to go to the keeper's end.